So let me ask, a, answer the last question in spite of saying that I wouldn't take any more questions, just because it's such a good question that I can't not answer. <laughs> well, thank you. Why am I optimistic that we could have some political influence uh, you know, uh, within decades? Uh, I, I'm, optimi <laughs> I'm optimistic because I couldn't do this job otherwise. No. Um, <laughs> I think that we're putting, I think that the Einwein Institute in particular and, and scholars affiliated with the Einwein Institute uh, are putting in place, uh, the, uh, uh, taking the kind of steps that are going to lead to that result. Uh, it might not be obvious because it's not going to happen tomorrow, it's not going to happen next year, but these steps. So for example, I can report because the press release will go out in, in the next couple of days that we have distributed uh, to date over one million copies of Ayn Rand's books to high schools, uh, to teachers who promised to teach those books. I believe that so far as part of this program, two million kids in American high schools approximately have read Ayn Rand in high school. That we will get to the point where a million plus kids every single year will read Ayn Rand in high school. So fast forward 15 years into the future. 15 million plus kids have read Ayn Rand in high school. Uh, so 15 million kids uh, have been exposed to these ideas. But they've not just been exposed to these ideas. Their English teacher gave them the book and told them they have to study it. So it can't be some radical, nutty stuff. It, 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 it sounds now like mainstream. Um, so again, injecting 15, 20 years out, it seems to me that Ayn Rand and her ideas are going to be much more mainstream than they are today because they will have been come in through a mainstream channel, i.e. high schools. Um, I also see the growth of, of every one of our programs and, uh, you know, at the university level. We now have programs where Ayn Rand is discussed or studied or in some way or another in, uh, in over you know, 30 universities, probably closer to 40 universities now uh, around the country. 40 universities, uh, we're up from zero eight years ago. That's nine years ago. So that's not bad in terms of growth. Um, the Institute has quadrupled in size in the last eight years. Uh, it used to be that we would do maybe, you know, one television appearance a year. Now, if we do only one a week, we're disappointed. Um, you know, we, we, we are injected into a culture in a significant way, and I think we're still new and young and still significantly uh, growing. Um, I also see resistance fading. Uh, so once upon a time, if you suggested they, you know, that people teach objectivism at the universities, the universities would rise up and you know, faculty would object and there would be big fights and so on. And the same in high schools and everywhere else. That resistance is gone. It, it's gone for lots of reasons, you know, some of which uh, are the, the fact that the left has nothing to offer and therefore has nothing, no motivation to resist because they stand for nothing. Uh, it's happening because a lot of the professors, even the ones who don't like objectives and read Ayn Rand when they were young, and they go, okay, well, it's Ayn Rand, you know, I enjoyed the books when I was young, these ideas. Most of the people who hated Ayn Rand and opposed her in the 60s never even read her. Um, and, and so I think there's a certain more openness among them because they read the books. So even those 15 million kids who are not going to agree with ideas are going to be more open to those ideas and going to be open to discussing those ideas more and to having them taught to future generations of kids. So I think that we're making progress in academia, we're making progress in high schools, we're making progress in the uh, culture at large. Now, you know, given all that, it's a huge, huge, huge job to change a culture. Um, and, and there's a lot of work that's going to be needed and there's a lot of people who are going to have to do that work and there's a lot of elements uh, to this. We're going to have to have more and more people writing, writing books, uh, <laughs> writing articles, uh, you know, it, more speaking money. up, more, going on money. to, yeah, lots, of, I, I was going to get the money <laughs> no, at the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, going, going on blogs and, and talking about the objectivist position or, or, or uh, you know, linking to an Ayn Rand ed editorial or Ayn Rand uh, article, uh, you know, mentioning her books. Uh, there's work for everybody. Everybody in the audience and everybody at the Institute multiplied by a thousand. There's enough work for all of us to do in changing the culture, and we need to do it. Letters to the editor, you know. Uh, Comments on uh, on newspaper articles uh, on online, 
Uh, there is a huge amount of intellectual activism that needs to happen between now and 20 years from now for us to have that political influence. But I'm, I'm becoming more and more confident that <clears throat> that is going to happen with a, with a larger and larger generations of, in, of people interested in Ayn Rand, with more openness to her ideas, with more openness to her books. Um, you know, we have real potential to make this happen. You know, but, as uh, Brian reminded me, to, 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 <laughs> to, you know, to do this, the Institute is going to need a lot of resources, lots of resources, people, uh, volunteers, you guys supporting what we do out there uh, in your own lives, and money, because, you know, we're, we've, we had a budget last year of about $8 million. We have a budget this year of about $8 million, which is huge for us, but it's nothing in the big picture when on a presidential campaign they're probably going to spend well in excess of $100 million. Uh, we need $100 million, you know. Um, a billion would be yeah, good, too. I mean, we're laughing, but, you know, don't laugh. I'm serious. Um, we need $100 million. We could do great things with $100 million, and, and I think we'll get $100 million. It's just a question of, of time and hard work and effort, and we're going to get there. And with those kind of resources, I think we can do a lot. And, and the most important thing that makes me optimistic is the fact that we have truth on our side. That is, Ayn Rand is right. Uh, her ideas are right. Uh, everything, every day when you open the newspapers, every event out there just proves the ideas more right. And as long as people uh, can still think, and as long as we still have free speech, which McCain, by the way, would like to take away from us, um, th you know, then there is hope and, and there is reason uh, to be, you know, optimistic. I, I like to think of it as realistic. Uh, about our prospects, uh, about our prospects uh, in the future. So, uh, you know, hopefully you'll join us in a in the battle, and it's going to be a battle uh, for the future of Western civilization, for the future of this country, and and we can all focus our energies on what's really important and not get diverted by things that are that I think are insignificant. You know, let's focus on on really changing this culture. But to change it, we have to change it. In, in, the, in some of the most funda in a fundamental way, not in a superficial one. Right. Thank you all. Thank you.